Welcome back. This is part four of special topics in health insurance. So I'm going to combine two chapters. I'm going to combine the Medicare and the Medicaid chapter. And I think at this point you realize that if you're in the healthcare field, you better know um, all the different parts of Medicare. So, you know, a lot of this is redundant now. A lot of the stuff that is in this two chapters you've already seen in previous chapters and it's just building. So you ought to be able to apply it and it as you saw, the uh, PowerPoints are quite long, and so I'm going to summarize those and try to hit the highlights, and I'm going to change around the power of three this time around. So let's go ahead and get started. So this week for the power of three, you've been doing this now for a couple weeks. You ought to be pretty good at it. We'd like to see you apply recent information, recent articles, recent information in the news to these topics. So insurance trust funds. Is Medicare and Medicaid going broke? And talk a little bit about that in your Power 3. The spell of illness. Give us some present day examples. For example, if someone has assets and they're giving all their assets away and making themselves poor to collect Medicaid at a nursing home, talk about that. Show us what really is happening and explain that to the class. In the last one, if you pick Doc Fixes, Everybody thinks that if we cut the pay to doctors, it's going to sure up Medicaid and Medicare. But is that really the case? Where does the problem lie? What is the underlying meaning of that? I mean, is it the doctors or is it the insurance companies or is it poor political decisions? Talk a little bit about that. Explain that. And if you can do a good job on these two topics and take some initiative, we can uh, cancel the power of three for the next chapter. So let's go ahead and get going. The chapter after this is again Medicaid. You've already seen the word crowd out and we're going to talk a little bit about long-term care insurance. We'll skip this slide for now and see how uh, this week's Power 3 turn out. For the last class you were asked to watch this video and it does a good job explaining the history of Medicare and Medicaid. There were three questions on your quiz and if you didn't watch that video I think you would struggle answering the questions but um, they did a really good job and I think it was pertinent and I think you benefited from it so let's go ahead and just kind of highlight on some of the facts from that particular video that you can apply to you know, other classes in in healthcare so if you got a question that asked who did Lyndon Johnson recognize for helping pave the way for Medicare and Medicaid your answer would be Harry S Truman Another important player besides President Lyndon Johnson was Wilbur Mills, who was with the House. He was the chairman for the House uh, Ways and Means Committee. Huge supporters of Medicaid and Medicare was the uh, American Federation of Labor. In opposition to Medicaid was the American Medical Association, and at that time, Dr. Aness, their leader, was. Uh, rallying around the country and he was saying that basically that Medicaid was coming between the patient and the physician and they hired you know promotional teams to try to change Americans thoughts about uh, Medicaid ironically the American Medical Association chose Ronald Reagan as their spokesman he was out there calling uh, Medicare and Medicaid socialized medicine and saying that the government was overstepping their boundaries. Okay, returning back to the chapter information and focusing on Medicare, I like this slide because I think it's very simple and, and it's easy to see all four of the parts, but A, hospital, B, doctor, C, you know, the advantage or supplemental, and D, drugs or prescription. Okay, so what's important to know in this chapter is the sources of financing for Medicare and provides the monies for Part A and the SMI trust fund that provides the monies for Part B. Now what's been in the news quite a bit and what ties back to the Power of Three presentation is projected depletion of the trust funds has been a matter of concern for quite some time. And as I said earlier, according to current forecasts, the HI trust fund will be depleted in 2018 unless current financial arrangements are overhauled. I can see that Part C on this particular chart says it's funded by both the uh, funds, but I was under the Balanced Budget Act of, of 1997 authorized uh, 
Medicare, the Medicare Plus program, which then provided a law that expanded the role of private plans such as HMOs, PPOs, private sponsored uh, organizations, and private fee for services. So maybe they they supplement with the funds from you know each of the two trust funds, and then premiums pick up the other costs. But I'm not going to swear to that. Okay, this chart makes sense. This is the um, showing the Federal Insurance Contribution Act, or FICA. That's what Uncle Sam takes from your paycheck there. If you look at the first one, you can see the payout on um, Social Security, disability, and those are cash benefits that are paid out to individuals. And then the other part of FICA is you've got your, you know, your health insurance, which is Part A, and then you've got the uh, supplemental, which is uh, B and D, and then you've got what the um, individual has to pick up, or 25% based upon their uh, income level. Before I go over this summary slide for Part A, let me say one more time that the three major factors that are causing this concern on the depletion of the trust funds are that the cost of delivering health care continues to grow at a faster rate than the inflation in the general economy. The aging population will consume greater quantities of health care services. The workforce is shrinking. The wage increases to support the tax revenues are smaller than the rise in medical inflation. So you got workers making less, fewer workers, and then the, the in continuous increase in health care costs. After this slide, I'll try to pull in a little a more recent video from the uh, Ways and Means chairman. As you can see, Medicare works just like Social Security. You got to be 65, but just like myself, if you're born after 1959, you do not receive full benefits until you're 67. The thing is you have to work 10 years or pay into the system for 10 years otherwise for Medicare you're gonna to have to pay $410 a month which sounds like a lot but if you went out to get your your own policy at 65 or 67 years old it's gonna be more than that per month. The 2013 trustees report continues to make it abundantly clear that Medicare's financial future is in trouble. Americans all over the country and across generations are paying into a program that we as a Congress cannot promise they will receive benefits for, for. But if we simply face reality and come together, we can act now, this year, to take the first real steps to make sure our citizens receive the medical care they deserve and have paid into when they need it the most. This section is kind of confusing to a lot of people and actually causes a lot of heartache for a lot of families who go over the 90 days and then go over the additional 60 days which causes financial hardship for the families. This is where we talk about a, a spell of illness but under Medicare there's a maximum of 90 days of inpatient hospital care is allowed per benefit period. Once the 90 days are exhausted there's a lifetime reserve of 60 additional days of inpatient days remain. The benefit period is the spell of illness beginning when the hospitalization starts and then ending when the beneficiary has been an inpatient in the hospital or a skilled nursing facility for another 60 consecutive days. The number of benefit period is not limited. The catch is once you go over that 60 days beyond the 90 days, those days are then used up and that's a one-time situation. Another rule is that Medicaid pays up to 100 days of a skilled nursing care facility after three consecutive days of being discharged as an inpatient in a hospital setting. Care also pays for home health care when a person is homebound and only needs part-time skilled nursing care. That's the key on that one. They'll pay up to 100 visits following three days of stay in a hospital. Finally, for the terminally ill, Medicare pays for the care provided by a Medicare certified hospice as you remember covers physician services and nearly it is voluntary to take it but nearly everybody takes it because you know the monthly premiums are so subsidized this one right here says it's $96 in 2010 I looked it up for you for 2014 it's $104 and 90 per month so that is pretty pretty cheap for health insurance when you're in your 60s again this is on a sliding scale based upon your income this slide goes over what's covered under Medicare Part B, 
I can see the second item down there. That's durable medical equipment. That's where there's there's a lot of fraud in that. That might be something interesting to uh, talk about during the Power of Three. Um, I'm sure you've seen the commercials. We'll get you in a hover round. It won't cost you a dime. So that's uh, that's kind of an interesting topic. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay, here's medic. Medicare Part C, I've already talked a little bit about that. Again, that's the coverage that's provided through a Medicare approved managed care plan. And um, that's insurance that covers what's not covered by other portions of Medicare. Part C uses a bid process that's based upon CMS benchmarks. So if the bid is below the benchmark, Medicare keeps 25% of the difference and the remaining 75% is rebated back to the plan. I was surprised to read that 95% of the plans, plan bids were below the benchmark, so maybe that benchmark needs to be reconsidered. The next two slides go over the current status of Medical Advantage program. This is the uh, HMOs and the PPOs. Let me pick up the pace again. Current status, this is the um, fee-for-service and the special needs plans. You can read through that or you should have already read through it in the PowerPoint. All right, we're getting closer. Part D, drugs, prescription drugs. This um, provision is to help seniors pay for their um, you know, prescription drugs and it was put into place by the Republicans uh, not that long ago. This slide covers the big controversy with uh, Medicare Part D as we refer to as a donut hole. I should have gotten a picture of Rafati eating a donut. Anyway, um, $250 annually de deductible. Once that deductible is satisfied, Medicare pays 75% and the beneficiary has to pay the other 25% up to $2,000. Then, here's the, here's the strange thing, it, between $2,250 and $5,100, Medicare does not have any coverage. There's your donut hole. But yet, when you go beyond, so somebody that has some serious medications they have to take, you go beyond 5,100, Medicare then pays 95% of any covered drug expenditures during that year. The situation I just talked about, it's just an updated slide for 2010. I was covering 2006. This slide gives you a feeling for what the average premiums are. It gives you um, 2009 and 2010. Additional um, information about uh, Part D is, you know, individuals can buy supplemental insurance to cover that donut hole, and employees that have, you know, drug coverage with their previous company can take advantage of that. There's, uh, of course, subsidies for low-income individuals. This slide covers the enrollment figures for 2008. The slide I covered earlier when I talked about the reasons for the decline in the trust funds. Again, this is a continuation of that discussion. You can read through the slide. Again, this slide is presenting more bad news, which we've already talked about, that the premium, premiums are expected to grow and have grown, and that's why we're in the shape we're in. You know, as expected, uh, future premiums are expected to increase. All right, that's the end of the chapter, and I usually try to close out with something happy, but today's going to be a little bit different. You see that? where it says you right there and think about 2014 you see that big white space right there that's all the Medicare costs that aren't funded that you're going to be responsible for that your generation's going to be responsible for the author kind of closed on a kind of solemn note I'm going to go ahead and just read his verbatim hang on a second hopefully you got into healthcare for the same reason that I got into the healthcare industry is that we need to fix some of these problems but here, back to you again. Consider the period 20 to 30 years from today. At that point, most of you watching this video will be in their mid-40s, mid-50s, the most productive earning years of your life. At that point, under current law, the Medicaid actuary, actuary assumptions that the Medicare program will constitute 6 to 8 percent of the gross domestic product. That is 2 to 2.5 times its share today. Thus, you will pay virtually all the amounts identified, which is sad, except those marked premiums and taxes on benefits, which will be few and far between. You will almost certainly pay for any solution to Medicare deficit that will involve higher taxes. Sorry, guys. 
All right, next chapter's on Medicaid. We'll see how that chapter goes. I know I said in the beginning I was going to combine the two chapters, but I think I'll go ahead and uh, make another video for Medicaid and go ahead and end it now. So I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.